Welcome back to the Weathermatic Partner Series. I'm Lex Mason, EVP of Sales at Weathermatic. Today, we've got the pleasure of speaking with Max Moreno of Bemis Landscape, located out in the beautiful Orange County, California. Max is gonna share some of the things of how he's led the charge in transitioning their business from an irrigation repair division to a water management division and all the good that has come along with it. This is the Weathermatic Premier Partner Series. All righty, well, we'll get kicked off. So uh, again, this is uh, Max Moreno joining us here from Bemis Landscape uh, in Southern California. I know, Max, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a minute here to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role and uh, different experiences there at Bemis. And I'll, I'll introduce myself shortly thereafter. So I'll kick it off to you here first uh, to introduce yourself, Max. All right. Uh, my name is Max Moreno. Uh, I've been working with Bemis La Landscape for 15 years now. Um, I started off as a irrigation manager for the company and has and have held that role for roughly 14 years. Um, re as of recent with the um, water management side, we have uh, changed my role now um, to director of water management and uh, water conservation. So uh, with my previous uh, experience uh, as an irrigation manager, I was more of a support and um, an instructor for our irrigation techs and our account managers, more of behind the scenes, uh, where now I'm more educating our clients and our customers and just uh, putting Bemis on the forefront when it comes to water management and basically coming up with new solutions to conserve water and uh, promote smart water management. So we, we've definitely changed our focus from just being a landscape company that does irrigation work and conserves water to uh, more of a smart uh, water management company as well. That's great. That's great. And that's one thing that we see so we see so frequently that interchangeable word between irrigation management and, and water management. And it's great to hear somebody who who does this and has held both roles to kind of distinguish between the two of you know, being that subject matter expert, leading a team of technicians and educating and training them to now it's the, you've built the staff, you've built the processes internally that you can now shift your focus over to educating the customers and separating, you know, your company from the literally hundreds of other competitors there in, in Southern California. So it's great to hear it firsthand from you. So first question, I'll, I'll toss, I'll toss your way, Max. And, and again, before I skip too far, uh, again, for everybody, Lex Mason here, uh, VP of sales with, with Weathermatic. And so I've had the pleasure of working with Max now for, uh, for a couple of years. Um, and our, our two businesses, I know we, we recapped in, in Corin's uh, interview there as well, but both family owned and operated businesses. Um, been here for, uh, been here. I always tell the joke of how I've, I've been here much longer than how long I've been getting paid. So that's my, uh, that's my claim to fame here at, here, here at Weathermatic. Um, so I'll, I'll go back to you, Max, here with another question. So talk a little bit of, you, you, brief, you briefly talked about it in the first uh, intro there, but why do you think water management has become such a more critical part of your business, you know, this year or the past two years compared to, say, 10 years ago when you were first getting started with Bemis? What's, what's been the difference? Why do you care? Why, why is it so much more important now than it was even 10 years ago? Well. One of the reasons why it's a lot more important now, um, being from California, we, we've gone through our spells of drought. So every time there's a drought, there's usually new laws and regs that the state is always uh, implementing. And for us, we need to stay on the forefront when it comes to these regulations and laws that they pass. And a lot of it has to do with conserving water. And most of the water that, that does get used uh, throughout California is in the landscape. And when it comes to landscape, it's really our responsibility to make sure that we're managing this water as efficiently as possible. So thus, this is why it's important to not just be a company that does irrigation, but that actually manages the water smart. Um, so that's one of the reasons why it's really important to just be on the forefront and why things have been evolving and changing. Uh, working in the HOA and commercial industry, um, Water is now becoming the second highest expense that, that uh, an HOA or commercial property endures. So when they look at us, not only are we a great landscape company, but we can also 
effectively manage their water and and stay within budget and hopefully um, convert some of that savings into the landscape as well. So we're always looking for new ways to not only be responsible with water, but to um, make the landscape and HOA look a lot better. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. Um, you know, a lot of people look at and stop at, well, how much, how much water, right, can we save our customers? And while, while that's great, that's a great initiative, you know, it's very heartfelt. It's, you know, it's the right thing to do, period. But the silver lining of that so often is if you can take 20 or 30 or 40 percent of your client's budget, like you mentioned, that's now the second highest line item that they that they manage and you can reduce that by 20, 30, 40 percent. Right. Where do you think those dollars end up? Right. And, and I use this example the just the other day about if you were to go and survey and ask your board members, would they rather be sending you know, that 20 or $30,000 a year to the, um, to the utility company, or would they rather be investing that into building that park that they've put off or doing that front entryway project or, you know, doing some, uh, some landscape lighting initiatives and things like that. It's a resounding, you know, it's a resounding, yes, we'd love to keep that, uh, keep those dollars internal versus sending them external. So that's a great, great point. Um, so, Let's shift from just your customer focus, right, to to kind of the internal piece. And this is probably going to draw on your your previous role experience a little more. But what do you think was the biggest factor into choosing SmartLink for your internal operations? What what did your crews like about it? What did you like about it that made it seem like a a long term sustainable platform to to switch to? So. When we first started with the SmartLink platform, you know, what I did look at was number one, water savings, make sure that, that these controllers do what they're supposed to do and save water. Number two, what we like to look at as well is sustainability. How sustainable is this smart controller? Um, so what we're doing is basically checking off the boxes in our list. The third item that we looked at was how efficient can we run our organizations with this system? And then it just basically checked another box off the list. So when we look at that, we're being a lot more efficient. Um, we're, not only are, are we saving water to the clients, but we're also saving labor and time on our end. Um, and then the fact that I love personally that these controllers are self-sustainable, meaning, you know, in my past with other smart controllers, when they go offline or what the client stops paying the utilities for the communication, it's no longer sustainable smart water saving controller. And with Weathermatic, it's kind of one of those controllers, a safeguard for us knowing that no matter what, they will always have a smart controller always running uh, with the, the weather stations. And then the last thing that, that was really great about the, the smart link was the integration of a water management utility with, with the, the, with the smartphone and the, the inspection. No other smart controller in the industry had that. So it was definitely a, a eye catcher for us, for us to not only start getting rid of so many apps and so many, uh, not using paperwork to do inspections and just everything migrated into one platform was, ver was a really good thing for us. So when we were checking off the list, not only did it check off a lot of boxes, but it actually added more than what we expected. That's great. That's great. And it, it's funny, you know, when you're, you, a lot of people are so focused on, okay, how many gallons of water can we save? And then you look on the, on the reverse of that, if it makes your internal processes more difficult, I'll, I'll tell you for every gallon of water that you might be saving using something that's more complex, how many, how many man hours internally are, are you having to add to your overhead just in order to make it uh, to manage the system? And so that's where, you know, we spend a lot of time obviously focusing on, on how to make it easy and how to make it accessible. And, and you're right. One of those processes that you do every month and for you guys almost every week, um, you know, doing inspections and, and site visits and checks, that inspection is something that's regular and recurring and you budget overhead hours on it. And so that was, that was really the thought behind, how do we make that recurring process that takes hundreds or thousands of hours a year into account? How can we make it 10% better? 
you know, how can we make it 15% better? Cause that's, that's a lot of hours that start to add up when you think about how many crews you guys are running and properties that you oversee a, a little bit goes a long way. Um, so let's, uh, let me ask you something else about the, about your clients. So I mentioned earlier, there's, there's hundreds of landscape companies in, in, um, in Southern California. And when you look at the nation as a whole, over 150,000 registered uh, landscape companies, you guys have been able to carve out this image as being, you know, forward thinkers, um, and, and technology, you know, technology natives, not technology laggards. Like, you know, a lot of the industry tends to be, you guys have always been at the tip of the spear. Um, how do you feel that that's helped you stand out and, and create that brand image with your customer base? Do you think it's led to a higher retention rate? Do you think it's opened more doors for, for new clients that you didn't have, you know, at the beginning of, of this 15 year ride? Uh, with Bemis, what do you think technology has done from a business development and a retention point of view? Uh, from a technology standpoint, I'm um, I'm pretty I'm pretty big on technology. I've all I'm kind of like that you know Best Buy geek guy where I'm always buying the latest you know phone or tablet. So it's because it, yeah. I always see things as working smarter, not harder. So when it comes to technology, we're always trying to be proactive. We're always trying to be ahead of the game because we know eventually the technology will implement itself regardless if, if you want it or not. So we, we're, we're very welcoming to technology. So when it came to the SmartLink program and the app and, and just what the, the controllers can do, um, it was very, it, it was comforting for us because we've always been on the forefront for technology. Um, but to the point where it was so simple and easy to use that, that it made things so easy for our guys out in the field. So that was one of the things that drew to us. Um, but in the long run, you know, we always, our company has always taken the stance of work smarter, not harder. And it shows because we're always trying to find every little bit of percent of efficiency to make, uh, to make our company grow and to help our guys, uh, work. So, uh, w when it comes to the smart link, it was a no brainer. Um, just, just that whole work smarter, not harder. That's how we've taken this approach. And a lot of, uh, a lot of the HOAs and our clients actually see that in us, that we're always on the forefront. We're always promoting new technology. So this is, this is an, this is another step in the right direction for us. Absolutely. That's a great point. Um, yeah, because with, with the state that labor is in as an entire country, but even particularly you look at California and just the competition out there, how many people are fighting for the same individuals. What we've seen is that when when you're able to market yourself, I mean, kind of the, the catchphrase now is to be a destination, you know, company, to be a company that people look at where they are right now and go, gosh, you know, we would, we would sure love to be over there because they're investing in their people you know, they're, they're driving newer trucks, they're, they're giving their people newer equipment, they're, you know, investing in making them more productive, um, and those kind of things. And that's something that we've seen, seen you guys stand out for, of course. Um, on the, uh, being on the front edge of technology, though, you're often faced with a really high barrier to entry, like from a cost point perspective. Um, usually when you're at the front of the curve, you are you are taking on the most expensive uh, most expensive tools and and methods to continue to innovate like that. And I know smart controllers. A lot of people think they're you know they're newer or they're just coming out. They're just getting well. Smart controllers have been around since before you were with Beamus. Since before I was even involved with Weathermatic, smart controllers have been along around for a long time, and they were incredibly expensive at the beginning. Talk to me a little bit about how you think the mixture of you know the capital. Uh, the capital program partnership, and then ultimately just the price point. How has that played into your massive conversion of your accounts over the past three years now? Um, I'm, I mean, that's huge. I mean, when we're talking about it, at least within our company, um, for the most part, we've worked with smart controllers in the past. Uh, one of the biggest obstacles has always been the cost. And with the cost, we have to basically show our clients that there is potential in some kind of ROI, return on investment. Um, with Weathermatic, the greatest thing about this, 
has been that capital program and the rel- relatively low cost of the controllers that makes it uh, makes it an advantage for us um, to show a return on investment quicker than other brands. Um, so it's been it's been really huge uh, since my days of working with Bemis, my 14 years. I mean, we would probably sell a smart controller maybe once or twice within a quarter to the point where it's every week we're, we're installing one in, in a brand new job. So uh, within about a year and a half to maybe two years of being on this program, we have literally installed, I think, over 400 controllers. I've never seen that within the company uh, our portfolio, that percentage of being maybe 10% smart controllers is now past 35 to going into 40%. So once we get to the point where we can actually say that half of our clients or half of our controllers are, uh, you know, are on a smart link system, I mean, it, it's, it's mind blowing because every percentage that we make is every percentage we're being efficient and we're saving water. So it, it, it's awesome. It, it's, it's great. And this kind of capital program has helped tremendously um, because our clients are not only just seeing that the landscape's looking better, we're managing the water. They're starting to see savings with the water bills. Um, It's been a win-win. So it's been really great. That's great. And and one thing just to kind of ask on an extension to that, when you talk about ROI, a lot of times people will stop at, okay, well, how quickly do I make my money back on an investment? Okay. So yes, technically that's ROI. But what a lot of people forget is, is what happens after that? When do I have to spend money again? So talk to me a little bit about how, how what we've done together has helped answer that. What's my future cost associated with this system? And how have you guys positioned that to, to win like you have? So as part of the, uh, the return on investment after the investment has been paid off, one of the things that we're seeing is that our customers, we're having the conversation with the customers of explaining to them that, hey, you know what, your your system has been fully paid and you're saving. Where now they have that extra funding that they used to pay toward the water bill, they now have it to invest into the landscape or even what I like to hear is the irrigation system. So I just had a conversation with a client last week at one of our HOAs where they basically said they already passed their ROI. They want to figure out more ways of saving. So we're actually going to upgrade their irrigation to the new pressure regulating heads. Um, That way we can control more of the irrigation and and improve uh, just the overall efficiency in water saving. So it's been key. Absolutely. And what kind of, what kind of role does warranty or ongoing expenses associated with these control systems how is that different what you're offering today from what you used to offer in terms of warranty and, and future expenses associated with this, these kind of systems? The warranty has been one of the big items that we always pinpoint. Um, in the past, you know, we, the warranty would be up to the manufacturer. Um, and a lot of times we'd be involved with the, with the other companies in trying a warranty. But once you get past that warranty, or even when the communication seems to have to or needs to be upgraded because technology moves quicker than anything I've ever seen. Um, uh, you know, communication all is always being upgraded. I mean, we're going from 2G to 3G to 4G. Um, so anytime there's new communication, a lot of these makers, they, they force you to basically buy new controllers. So then we have to have that conversation with that HOA saying, Hey, I I know a few years ago you purchased this controller and now you're going to have to upgrade to the newest controller because the communication has now gone from 3G to 4G and your controller is not capable of maintaining that communication. And this is where it kind of circles back to the whole sustainability. Um, with the smart link program and the total protection warranty, it's just so great because I can now tell our clients that are on the system, letting them know that the technology is going to change, but guess what? It's all tied in with the warranty and you're going to, you're not going to incur that cost. So when we're talking about future costs, it's great because once we have that conversation beginning, we don't have to have it afterwards. 
That's great. That's great. I know so often people people look at an ROI and, and like I said, just focus on the front side, but it's really critical to think about, am I going to be in my same situation? I still remember you, me, and Colin, and and you told, you told him that, and he walks over to the whiteboard and does a quick math equation over there of, of what something, you know, a, a project that you guys had sold a couple months prior to that. And he goes, wow, it, you know, the ROI basically resets without this every, every five or six years, right? It just wipes out your ROI because you're having to replace, you know, communication cartridges and hubs and versus a, hey, here's a one-time fixed cost. This is what it is. As long as we keep current, there is no recurring, there is no additional expenses with it. So, yeah, we've seen that be a big deal with, with board members and commercial properties and, and uh, people alike. So that's great. Well, hey, Max, I will, I will wrap up with this and just thank you so much for uh, sharing a little bit about your experience. Uh, if there's anything else that you'd, you'd like to say or, or share about uh, our time working together and what SmartLink or the partnership, anything like that, or water management in general has done for your career or, or the uh, company Bemis um, at all, man, I'd, I'd love, to, love to hear any of your other thoughts. Uh, just in, in general, the partnership has been great. It, it's great to align ourselves up with a great company uh, like Weathermatic. Uh, what's great is that Weathermatic has been around for so long. I believe it's been 75 years. So not only is it is it a, a great company, it's a great company that has grown roots. Um, the fact that I can also tell uh, a lot of our clients that uh, not only are the controllers helping save water, you know, we're, we're being very responsible. Um, we're, we're making the landscape look better. But uh, one of, one of the, the main reasons why I've always liked this partnership and the controllers has also been that Save Water, Give Life initiative. So that, that's kind of like the, the cherry on top that, that I like to mention to people. Um, and a lot of people have gone to YouTube to see the videos. And it's been one of those things where, they like the investment that has been put in because there's always a good cause. Um, so other than that, you know, uh, with, with everything in a whole, um, it's been great. Like I said, our company, by the end of this year, we're hoping to be at least halfway 50% to above 50% um, on the smart link network across all our, all our clients um, and jobs that we have. So it's been great for us. Man, we'll really, really appreciate you saying that. And it's, it's so important too. I mean, at the end of the day, we're, you know, we're in the landscape and irrigation business. Um, there are a lot of things that are more important than, than what, than what, you know, I do on a daily basis around the world. People are lack access to clean drinking water. And if, and if little old weather Maddock over here and, and Bemis can do their part to, you know, to help the greater good and provide that clean drinking water, um, you know, then, then, you know, we can, we can sleep, rest a little easier at night, right? Knowing that we're, we're contributing and, and helping around the world. So love that. Uh, Max, man, appreciate, appreciate you and, and the, you know, the friendship and the, um, everything like that, that we've developed over the past couple of years, working together, looking for, uh, forward to many more years of success. Uh, wish you guys the absolute best, man. This has been a, been a lot of fun. So thanks for talking with us here today. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys for everything you've done and the support.